Well, hi, everyone. I'm so glad to be with you. Thank you to the Novi Public Library and thank you, Veg Michigan, Olivia. Um, Michelle and I are so excited to share some recipes with you tonight. January is kind of typically a great time to sort of help get back on track after all of the indulgences of the holidays. So we're going to start with some of our favorite ways to do just that. And what I'm starting with is breakfast, because if you've got some kind of idea of a nice, healthy way to have breakfast and have that food ready in the refrigerator for the next day or for the week, it'll really just kind of start the day right. So I'm starting with one of my favorite easy go-tos, which is an overnight oats. You may have had overnight oats already. And there's endless ways of doing this, but this is just kind of one of my favorites. And it was sort of an um, kind of an entry level version for me because the first time I made overnight oats, instead of using my liquid was actually apple cider. And so that's kind of the base of the foundation, I guess I'd say of this um, idea. You don't need to use apple cider. You don't need, you could use apple juice. You don't need to use juice at all, but you could. And that makes it a little sweeter because I'm not adding any sugar to this or maple syrup or any other sweeteners except for the fruit. So we'll just kind of start with this idea. I'm gonna start with two jars. You could start with as many as you like. You could line up four, six, eight jars. These actually stay, you, we call them overnight oats. And so people typically think you need to make it the night before in order to have it the next day. But it's actually something you can kind of create in advance for several days worth of breakfast. So I'm gonna just do two, just to give you the idea of this. Um, I have a funnel that fits in, you don't need that, but I'm putting in approximately, I'm gonna fill it about halfway with, um, regular rolled oats. So just the standard kind of oats. You could use a different kind of oat if you wanted to. It turns out to be somewhere between a third and a half a cup, fills up half of a jar um, of these one cup mason jars. Now this is kind of a random serving size. It doesn't need to be this. If you don't have jars that have tops on, the, on them, you could actually just use a drinking glass or a bowl or anything else you could actually cover with, you know, like a saran wrap type of a, a, a cover um, in the refrigerator. But the idea is to kind of have something that you can cover it with at the end. So I'm going to, I'm filling these approximately with, you know, somewhere between a third and a half cup of oats. And again, it kind of depends on how much oats you like, because you can fill it all with fruit or you can, you know, kind of have it more, more oaty. So now I'm adding half of a teaspoon of apple pie spice. You could actually use just cinnamon, which I often do. You could use pumpkin pie spice, but anything like this with these wonderful kind of, you know, this, the spicy smell, it just gets your juices flowing, makes it really delicious. And now from here, we're going to fill up just to the level of the oats in this jar, some liquid. It could even be water. It could be, I'm using actually an unsweetened almond milk. You could use any plant milk that you like. And you could use a juice, as I mentioned. So there's really, you know, it's kind of up to you what you'd like to fill your oats to this point with. And then we're going to put all kinds of fun toppings. So I'm going to start with diced apples. And that's just because it kind of goes with this cinnamon -y idea. And, you know, you could actually use absolutely any fresh fruit you have. It could be berries, it could be, you know, a pears or even citrus, anything, you know, like oranges. It could be absolutely anything, even melons or pineapple. But apples kind of go with this theme. So that's the idea of this. And then I'm just chopping them. It could be kind of a fine dice or sort of more chunky, kind of depends what kind of mouthfeel you like. And I'm saying approximately a quarter cup, but this is literally something that you do not need to measure. I'm just going to put in a couple of mm, tablespoons, maybe it's going to turn out to be three or four tablespoons of apples. I just love the fruit in here. You could even use frozen fruit, frozen berries, mango, anything you like. But again, I'm kind of sticking with this apple theme because it seems like it's a nice cold weather choice. So we're, we've got our apples in here. And so now they're kind of chunky with apples and we're gonna add more toppings to make it even more wonderful. 
Now I actually have some fresh cranberries and I just chopped them kind of a rough chop, literally fresh cranberries. You could certainly use dried if you like. The fresh are really crunchy and tart. And I kind of like that contrast of the tart and the sweet apple. So I'm just putting in fresh cranberries. You can leave this out if that tart kind of scares you a little bit. And um, in fact, you could add more of the sweet if you like. And then I'm gonna add some sweetener, sweeten, sweeten, sweeten it further with some fruit. So I have taken some pitted dates, dates that we've taken the pits out of, and I'm just, I've chopped those as well, just so again, we're going to be able to have small pieces of everything that are similar in size as somebody, you know, as you're ready to have this the next day and mix it all together, you'll get the, the delicious sweetness sort of distributed throughout. So I started with um, the, a total of two tablespoons that I'm dividing between these two jars of dates. And then I'm doing the same thing with dried apricots. And I just love that contrast of apricots and dates. I've done, I've used this mixture in a lot of different things that I like to, you know, even cookies, oatmeal cookies, dates and apricots, because somehow there's a little tang to the apricots and there's, it's balanced nicely with that sweetness of the dates. We've got the crunch of the apples, the sour of the cranberries we're adding in. And now I'm going to just top it, and this is optional, with some toasted almonds, maybe a tablespoon or so each. Again, it could just be a really light sprinkle. We're gonna kind of push it down with our fingers so that we make sure that when we open these up the next day, they're gonna be nice and full. So I have just, I'm ready to go with two beautiful jars to stick into the refrigerator. I'm gonna just put my top on. And these are going to go right in the refrigerator for tomorrow. It's great for breakfast. It's really a nice afternoon snack as well. So you can kind of have these anytime you want. And these, again, will last for several days in the refrigerator and stay really, really nicely. So this is overnight oats. And um, in the morning, you can just take this right as is and eat it out of the jar if you like. Usually what I do is pour it into a bowl and warm it briefly, but you wouldn't need to. It could be, it's delicious cold as well, but that's overnight oats. Hope you like it. Michelle? That looks delicious, Vicki, as usual. I, um, this time of year, actually it starts off in the fall when the kids go back to school, you start seeing the Halloween candy. And then this year before Halloween was even over, they had the Christmas candy out. The magazines are all about food and desserts and all that. And then you get to January and it's diet and organization. But this year, before Christmas even arrived, uh, Target had Valentine's candy and Easter candy out. So it's kind of hard, like if you're waiting for a time to eat a little better to have uh, the food companies cooperate. Um, I think we, we have about 200 food decisions a day without even realizing it. So having some foods ready really helps, makes it, makes it a lot easier because you know what you're going to have and it just makes it easier to stick to the plan that you want. What I'm making first is yellow split pea curry. I like this kind of thing because you can set it up and you don't have to refrigerate it. You don't have to worry about it going bad. It is just the dried peas. And then I have, I have a clean um, spice jar, a small one, and I just put all the spices in because there are a lot of them. And when you're making something over and over again, it's nice to just line them up, you know, so you have, you don't have to do that measuring all the time. So if you either don't want to go out or you don't, you know, have something that you need, this is just an easy dinner to make. And I will tell you, when you rinse the split peas, they become brick-like very easily. So I'm going to dump that in. I am making a double. It's already stuck. <laughs> It just becomes like glue very quickly, just since this class started. So what I'm going to do is this would be good if you needed a brick. You have to rinse any kind of beans or lentils, that kind of thing, before you cook them. And because I'm making a double batch, I have twice the amount of the broth. You don't have to use the broth. If you want this to be a soupier consistency, you would put more liquid in. 
But this is how simple it is. Because you have everything measured out already. And I think that looks kind of cool with the different layers of the spices. Just put that in. And give it a little bit of a mix. Usually I would just rinse right before I was going to put it into the instant pot so that wouldn't happen. But I'm going to set. Turn the seal, the bell, and then I'm just going to put, there are so many different kinds of instant pots nowadays, but on this is one of the earlier ones. I just set the pressure, normal pressure, I'm setting it to 10, and that's it. I'm going to come back to this later on when it's done, but that's just, that's all. You can go uh, walk your dog, feed, you know, whatever you have to do. Have a little time for doing some homework or some other things around the house. It's just that simple to get that going. And I think it's nice to have, I just keep it in the uh, pantry. I will mark it, I'll put yellow split pea. I put the date on just that I don't want it to be too far out, uh, but it's just really easy. I've made them for my mom, you know, to have at her house so that she can make a simple dinner. And I think they're nice to give too. And that is that. So back to you, Vicki. Thank you, Michelle. Great idea. And I'm going to, my next um, item that I'm making is my lunch, which I think of as kind of an easy, one of my easiest sort of template lunch ideas. And it's to take a wrap of your choice. I'm using an Ezekiel sprouted grain flourless tortilla. And I happen to find this blue package, which is a low sodium um, one the other day. Normally I find the orange one, which doesn't say low sodium. They're both good. And um, these are really delicious. It comes with six of these tortillas that are whole grain, no oil added, and they're just really delicious to toast up or just use as is. I like them warm better, but they're nice and pliable when they're not warm. So this is how I'm gonna to start today. And if you wanted to, when this wrap that we're making right now is done, you could put it into a panini press or just into a skillet and warm it that way, or you know, microwave it if you chose to. And if you don't wanna wrap it and you'd rather just have it open faced, you could toast this and then do the toppings that I'm going to show you right on top of that without wrapping. So we're starting with this lovely wrap. And what I will say is before we even get started doing our wrapping is something else that I'm making. It's kind of a note in the recipe and that's what I'm calling spicy beans. We're gonna be using this mixture, super easy. I love easy. And so this is simply a black a can of black beans that I have um, drained and rinsed and put it into a pan. So. It's actually just all dark in there, but I just warmed that up just to get it started. And then I'm adding to that one third of a cup, could add a half a cup or whatever amount you like of salsa. This is a medium salsa. And so now I've got black beans with some salsa in it. Super, super simple, but it's just kind of a spicy black bean mixture now. And without doing pretty much no cooking, it's just really warming this up. And it's already warm because the beans were nice and warm, even though the salsa was not. So this is going to be one of the things I'm layering on to this very easy wrap. What's lovely about this wrap is it can be absolutely anything you have on hand. I like to use as my kind of glue to get things all adhering to the base hummus. And so I'm using a hummus here that is just, um, it's actually oil free. Um, but you can use any kind of hummus that you like, or um, in fact, if you don't want to use hummus, you could even use like a non-dairy cream cheese or one of the, you know, just something kind of nice. And you could use a, a bean spread of a different kind, like a refried beans, but hummus, I think works nicely. And to this, if you wanted to, you could add a little more seasoning like mustard or hot sauce, something like that. But I think this is just nice as it is. Um, and so again, I'm not even measuring, I'm just kind of putting a layer of hummus on a wrap. You could line several of these up 
I'm just doing one to show you, but again, you could kind of prepare these. So once these are ready, you've got lunch in the refrigerator as well. So to this now, I'm just going to put some fresh spinach. About two thirds of a cup is what I measured. We'll kind of see what fits here. If you don't have spinach, you could use a baby kale or you could just use lettuce, anything you like. And so I'm just kind of making a nice layer here of some greens because we always like to have something fresh in our day, um, not just cooked things. And so now I'm gonna add some cooked delicious vegetables. So I happen to have asparagus. I actually made a point of it because I like asparagus in this. So I'm putting, um, I just literally took fresh asparagus and uh, roasted it for about 10 minutes at 400 in the toaster oven. And I do that often. And so I'm just gonna put in four or five spears of this simply roasted leftover asparagus. And to that, and now I'm going to add just a couple other things that I have on hand. So actually now we are gonna put our, our lovely bean mixture, which is so good and so simple. Let's see if I can catch the light. So easy. And I'm just gonna add a couple spoonfuls on top. Again, this is completely up to you how much you put and you know how spicy you make it. You could use a different kind of bean. In January, lots of people make Hop and John with black be or with black eyed peas. You could use any kind of greens you like if you wanted to um, bury the greens as well. But we've just got our bean topping, and this really is great just as is. We've got our asparagus and the fresh spinach. But I'm going to add just a couple more things because I happen to have them. I have some roasted um, cauliflower as well. Same idea of just taking some fresh cauliflower. You could use frozen as well. If you wanted to just steam that, maybe add a little salt and pepper or some smoked paprika. And then I happen to also have, and again, this is just because I've got it, I'm adding it and just it's just delicious. And that's just a little bit of butternut squash that I roasted with onions for about 40 minutes. Um, Again, at 400 degrees, that's usually what I roast at. Um, and I did the same thing with the cauliflower for around, maybe about 40 minutes or so, just till it feels kind of fork tender. And there we are, we've got our piles of vegetables and beans, and now I'm just going to wrap it. And so you're gonna try to kind of wrap this, um, you know, basically burrito style. Uh, you could um, fold in your edges if you want, and so on, but I'm not even gonna bother doing that just to kind of give you the idea. We're just gonna fold it in half, beautiful right there, and then just slice it to show you what's, how it looks inside. Let's see, I didn't get all the way down to the bottom. There we go. And our burrito, our uh, wrap with beans and greens is all ready to go. And you could just go ahead and eat this. You could warm it um, if you chose to, or eat it at kind of room temperature. We've got the hot beans and the cooler greens in here. Um, or you could wrap this all up and have it ready for tomorrow, in, you know, some plastic wrap or some other kind of food safe container. So that's easy. And you can just use what absolutely whatever you've got on hand or keep it as simple as you want with just the beans and some um, you know, lettuce and tomatoes. Uh, basically, whatever you've got on hand all works. Fresh cucumbers, avocado, you know, cooked corn, whatever you like, whatever you have on hand, it all works in this easy wrap. And that's that, Michelle. And that looks delicious too. One of the things that what I'm going to do now is um, a mason jar salad. A lot of what Vicki and I are doing, they're templates. So you can put whatever foods that you like and will eat and it's versatile. So you can have, you know, whatever kind of prep, whatever kind of vegetables you'd like. Buying them prepped is a nice time saver. It's not cheating or lazy. It just makes it easier for you. Uh, cutting them up, like I, uh, you can buy shredded carrots. I just, put them through a food processor because I have a shredding attachment and that makes it easy. And having all these vegetables, you can make the jar, the salad I'm gonna do, a Buddha bowl. You can make the wraps Vicki just showed, soups, sautés. You can do all sorts of things with them. So it's very good to have prep vegetables. Kind of have an idea of what you're gonna do with them so you don't 
prep them and throw them out at the end of the week. So what I'm going to do, I really do like having um, mason jar salad. I, I'm making easier, like simpler, I won't say easier, simpler things so that, uh, you know, if you want to, you can make this more complex. I'm using ingredients. I've got quinoa that I did use to cook in the Instant Pot, but you can buy it frozen so you don't have to. So things are just easy to get. Canned beans, prep vegetables, pre-washed salads, things like that. So you can assemble them quickly without taking a lot of time. You can make it more complex. You can roast vegetables, you can do dressing, you can do a lot of different things. So what I'm doing right now, uh, first I'm gonna use a wide mouth jar. I prefer the mason jars because they have a really good seal on them. And I like this kind of seal. You can use the stainless ones that come with them, but these work really well. Some of the other lids don't, seal really well they leak and if they're leaking they're going to let air in too so it's um, i think better to use the original or something like this which is got a really like seal um, leak proof container so you just start putting in i like to get a lot of different colors in so eating the rainbow getting the reds the oranges the greens the red the yeah already said red uh just having all these things and you can just do um, like an assembly line. So you make as many as you want. I'm just going to make two. And depending on your appetite, you can use the smaller mason jar or a bigger one. This is the 24 ounce. And I know it's winter and it's cold out today, but um, my family likes cucumber. So that's what I'm putting in. Okay, so cucumber, grape tomatoes. And again, these would, everything I have here would go uh, for the vegetables would go really well in a wrap. And if you have, like I have chickpeas, if you're cooking those and making a batch of them, you could make, use the whole bean like this, or you could use, um, you could make a, a bean dip like Vicki had for her uh, wrap. And I'm putting about a half a cup of beans. And I just like to alternate a little bit so I can see different, call the different layers. I'm going to put some shredded carrots in. Now, if you want, you can put dressing at the bottom. I find that a little less convenient because then you've got to kind of scrape it out at the end. So I just I have these little jars. I use a lot. I use them a lot. It's just an old uh, spice jar that I took the label off and washed, and I can put my dressing in there and then just add it later. A player to be named right now. Okay, my single just dropped. Put a half a cup of quinoa in. Any combination, whatever you like, whatever you'll eat. Uh, beans, whatever kind of beans, grains, farro, rice, quinoa, whatever you're gonna have, whatever you'll eat. Put in some red onions. That's why I've got my rainbow in here. Getting all those good phytonutrients. So good for us. You could put, um, avocado or other things in here that some people might be following Rick Esselstyn's seven day rescues. So I left the avocado up this time, but my dressing isn't super compliant with his. So I'm just jamming. What I do is I push down on the, I push the greens down. If you can see that they're here, I push them in. It's just a mixed green, you know, to help your microbiome. It's recommended that we eat like 30 different foods a week. And then something like this with the mixed greens, the dressing and all these vegetables, I've got over probably 15 right there. I sometimes will put um, an Italian seasoning mix in with my quinoa. And just so you know about that, those count. And I've got six different herbs in my Italian seasoning mix. That's six different foods. That counts as six different foods for your microbiome. So I put a lot of that in. The more that I shove in here, the tighter the seal will be, the less air that gets in. It'll last a little bit better. And I like to put a little fresh basil. 
I'm going to oops, I'm flipping greens around here. And to me, when you have you've got all the colors in there, it's nice and vibrant. And to me, that like that makes me want to eat it when I see all those colors. And I just I know what I'm going to have. It's more satisfying to me. So now I'm going to make the dressing. Very simple. This is again you, whatever dressing you'll like, um, and we'll eat. But this is something simple that I you know you don't have to have a lot. You know, like um, you don't have to have really a lot of fresh things. And so I've got a cup of water. I mean, often I will make a green goddess with avocados, but you know sometimes it's hard to find avocados that are at the right stage. So I like to have a dressing that I can just use all the things I have on hand. Um, half cup of um, raw unsalted cashews. I've got the Dijon mustard. And I think sometimes I like this dressing this time of year too because maybe I had a little more sweets than I usually do. And this is still kind of gives me that kind of takes care of that sweet tooth. I've got four medjool dates and I always say to check, like pit them and look at them first to make sure they don't have any of the brown spots or the black inside. And I just put a little bit of salt in. I don't always because I cook for my mom and she's on a sodium, a low sodium diet. So a lot of the time I just won't even put the salt in. And I'll make some noise. Forget. I forgot to put in the um, lemon juice and apple cider vinegar. I need my acids in here. Like I said, you can get more complex and have, you know, layer in some more flavoring, but I think a good sauce or dressing really elevates a lot of simple food. So that's why I like to have a good tasty dressing. And this is what, it's just easy to put this in. Something like this, nice and creamy. You can use, if you don't want to use the nuts or are allergic, you can use sunflower seeds. That works really well if you are avoiding all um, fats, like all nut, I mean, uh, nuts and seeds, like that kind of thing. You can use a white bean. Usually people use cannellini, navy bean, lima bean, butter bean, those are the creamiest. So I wouldn't use, um, uh, what is it? The uh, great northern bean, that doesn't work as well for that, but you can use those, the beans, and it'll come out creamy. It's not as rich. And one of the things I don't mind about having that little bit of uh, cashew in there, made a big amount, you know, I'm not gonna use a lot at a time. And the nuts in the, the nuts provide the fat that allows us to absorb more of the nutrients in the, in the salad, the, you know, the fat soluble vitamins. So that's that. It's just nice to have these things ready. You know, I find myself, if I know I'm gonna have this, it makes it a little bit more satisfying for me. I can make four or five at a time, whatever kind of beans, like I will make a Southwestern uh, kind of blend. Um, I might do things with roasted vegetables, whatever you want, but this is just a really easy one to use and to make. And that's that. Back to you, Vicki. Thank you, Michelle. Those salads look so good. Those are really delicious. Um, my next one that I'm making now is a soup, and I really love to have, really year-round, but especially this time of year, a pot of soup that's handy to use throughout the week. And this particular recipe I'm making today is one of my favorites because it's so easy and it's really delicious. 
Um, this is one of the recipes that I have made with classes with individuals who are just kind of learning to um, eat plant-based, uh, more foods in their diet, as well as um, my, my private clients. And um, what is great about this is that it freezes really well. It makes a very nice large batch. So there's several portions for today, tomorrow, throughout the week, if you like, or again, you can freeze it and you can really repurpose this in some different ways. So let's get started and I'll give you some ideas about how we can use this. So we're going to start by just chopping up an onion and a celery uh, or, or onion, one onion, one sweet onion. I've just diced it ahead of time and three or four stalks of celery, kind of up to you. It depends how big they are, how much you like celery. I like celery. I'm using kind of a whole big bag full. And then that's it as far as the vegetables go. Now we're going to add our lentils. And like Michelle, I have a big brick of lentils because I sorted and rinsed these just a little while ago. And now it's like kind of one big block, but they'll all break up during the cooking process. So I'm just going to drop these in. It's red lentils, which are the creamiest lentil and they cook really quickly and um, they're just nice and easy. So they're super wonderful, a lot of fiber. They're just, it's a great food to add to your diet. So, and it's also lots of protein. Many times people will ask, you know, where are you getting your protein when you switch to this way of eating? This answers that question really beautifully. So now we've got our lentils and our vegetables in a pot. And this is actually the pot that goes with a pressure cooker, an electric pressure cooker. But if you don't want to cook it that way, um, you can certainly cook this on the stove if you don't have an electric pressure cooker. Um, the method is going to be exactly the same, except that it's going to cook on the stove in a pot, something like that, a nice large soup pot for roughly about an hour, an hour and 15 minutes, maybe less. It's, it would be done earlier if you like the texture of the vegetables and lentils slightly less tender. You could also put this in a slow cooker, a nice large slow cooker and cook it for five or six hours on high. So again, it kind of depends on your, um, you know, whatever method you like, but I love using a pressure cooker as does Michelle because it's hands off. Once you set it, you just kind of can go about all of your activities and it turns itself to warm when it's done. It's just lovely. So here we go. We've got our vegetables, our lentils, and now to that, I'm adding two quarts of broth. So I've got two quarts of vegetable broth. And one of the brands that I like is the one made by Trader Joe's. And that's this one here. Um, it's just vegetable broth with just vegetables and seasoning. And I really like it because there's no sugar, there's no oil in it, and it feels really pure. But if that's not super important to you and you want to use a different brand, that's completely up to you. You can even make your own broth. But I like to have boxes of broth on hand just for ease. The other brand that I like a lot is called Pacific and that's this one right here. It's a vegetable broth, same idea of just vegetables and seasoning with no sugar or oil. So we've got two quarts. You know, if you didn't have broth and you wanted to use all water, it would probably work also, but this broth does add a nice dimension of flavor to get things started without a lot of work on your part. So then we're adding our seasoning. Well, actually I'm adding a little more liquid. So I'm adding two and a quarter cups of water to this mixture and then all of our seasoning. And like Michelle, I have mine ready ahead of time. I make this soup a lot. So you could certainly put it into jars if you knew you were gonna make this every week and have it all ready, but it's um, not too hard to assemble all at once. And that this includes some cumin, um, about a tablespoon of cumin, some turmeric, which is a wonderful anti-inflammatory. It includes coriander, some salt and pepper, and some curry. And again, you can leave out the salt if you chose to, but I do add a little bit of salt for this. And then um, two, that's it. So we've got a big pot ready to put into the pressure cooker. And I just made one ahead, which I'll show you in a second. And we'll put that on to cook for roughly 20 minutes. So we're gonna cook, bring it to high pressure, let it cook for 20 minutes. Then you could let it sit for a few minutes if you wanted to. Um, I usually will let it sit for maybe about 10 minutes or so and then release the rest of the pressure, but you wouldn't need to it. You can, I've actually opened it up right at 20 when it cooks down to zero. 
um, by doing the quick release method of the rest of the pressure. And then we've got this pot of soup, which I just prepared and it looks like this. And I'm going to make it even more delicious by, and really I say more delicious, it's just that I like the texture of this. But I'm gonna give it a stir and it would be perfectly fine to eat just like this. I'm gonna show you the texture kind of like this. It's a little bit chunky. And so what I'm going to do, you could put this into a blender if you wanted to. I'm going to just use this stick blender, an immersion blender to get this texture just slightly smoother because I just think it's so wonderful when it's rich and creamy. Let's see if I can move it over so my cord will hold. And I'm going to, you can just do this for as long as you like and make it super creamy, really pureed, or just kind of half and half, which is how I like it. A little bit of texture with the vegetables and a lot of creaminess. Okay, that's it. And again, this step using the immersion blender um, or um, a, a real stand-up Vitamix blender, something like that, it's optional. You, it's ready to eat without that, but I like that texture. And so now we're ready to plate it. And so I'm just going to show you what this looks like. It's nice and creamy. And we're just going to pour this into this steaming hot soup into a wonderful bowl, ready to enjoy. And here we go. And it's so flavorful with the curry and all of the spices and it's wonderful. You could sprinkle a little bit of fresh herbs on here if you like. Oh, I forgot one thing, which is fantastic to do at the very end. And that's to add one quarter cup of fresh lemon juice. So I actually forgot to do that. So we're going to go ahead and stir that in and I'm gonna pour this back. So forgive me, we're going to make it a little messier here. I forgot that very important feature. I love the citrus at the very end because it adds this real nice brightness to the flavor. And um, I do like it better to add at the very end rather than during the cooking time, but you could do it, you could cook it with it as well. So we're just going to replate, forgive me, and um, this lemon juice makes it just so wonderful. We've got the spices and the lemon and it's just, just heavenly, just like this, ready to go. And you could add to this if you wanted to, some cooked potatoes or some baby peas, some rice, some brown rice. Um, you could add a little bit of you know, fresh cilantro or basil on top if you wanted to. But also this is really delicious over a baked potato or over a sweet potato. And as I mentioned, it freezes really well. So you can store it in a container, um, you know, a large quart size or, you know, individual portion sizes. I like to use something called super cubes that allow you to freeze this in packages of two cups or one cup. I have different sizes of this. It's silicone, it has a plastic lid. So you can actually freeze it. Once it's frozen, pop out the, blocks and store it into a, like a zip plastic freezer bag and be able to pull it out and warm it up for three minutes in the oven, in the microwave um, at a you know, moment's notice and have fresh hot soup anytime you want. So this is really nice to have on hand because again, if you've got something hearty and satisfying like lentil soup, it will help you get right back on track to do all the things you want to do with your um, healthy eating throughout the week. Michelle? It looks good. And you said you forgot the uh, lemon, which I love the lemon. It brightens up, up very nicely and you can add things in later. But I wanted to be sure to tell you when you finish your, um, when you go to eat your mason jar salad, you don't want to eat it out of here. You're going to just shake it up and put it into a bowl, put your dressing on if it's not already in the jar and enjoy it that way. The next thing I'm doing is a, a barbecue, um, what's this, like smoky maple, marinade, a baked uh, tofu. I think baked tofu is a really handy thing. Again, you can put it in the bowls, you can put it in the jars, you can put it in wraps. 
Uh, sometimes we'll have it just with planks and some mashed potatoes and some sauteed greens. I want to press it first. I'm using extra firm tofu. I usually get this kind from Trader Joe's. Um, and I press it. There are a couple different ways to press. Often I will just put it between two plates. I'll put a um, paper towel, dish towel, bar mop, whatever, on top and then bottom. And I'll put the, the other plate on top. And then I have this nice heavy cast iron uh, plate I put on top so it presses. And I'll drain it every once in a while because the, the liquid will come out. And so I will put that, I'll like, squeeze out whatever I'm using to absorb the moisture and start again. Or this is a fancy little outfit, it's the um, Tofu Express. And you can put it in here and put the tofu in, put this on, you put this block and it presses it really fast and very efficiently. It does sort of deform the block. So sometimes I don't want that option. So I just do it with the plates. I also, because I was doing two blocks at a time today, I put the two plates like I just showed you. And then I had a, a, a pot with three cans of beans in it to weight it down that way. So next thing I'm gonna do, once it's, um, I'm going to cut it into planks. Usually what I will do is just kind of eyeball, cut it in half, cut it in half again. Oops. Um, my family likes different sizes, so I will make them different thicknesses. Some like them really thin. You can use this marinade on other things, like if you're looking for that hickory maple, gives it sort of the taste people miss about bacon, that's smoky uh, maple. Um, so, but you can use it on sliced eggplant, shiitake mushrooms, rice paper, all sorts of things. And the other thing is you can just, um, you could omit if you don't want the maple and the smoke, you can actually just use the, um, I am using coconut aminos, but you can use soy sauce or tamari or the uh, regular amino acids, but those just know those are a lot higher in sodium, much higher. So, so I'm doing these little planks. And there should be 12. Okay. I like to use this for a lot of different things. Um, I've put it in, like I said about the planks, but we also I put it in like a penne carbonara. Am I saying that right? Yeah, so it just, that adds it like a cut into smaller little chunks to, to go with the pasta like that. And then get a baking sheet. And I'm just gonna lay, spread these out. A lot of people worry about soy and because of the estrogens, but they're plant estrogens or phytoestrogens and they have weaker estrogens in them and they actually block some of the receptors, the estrogen receptors. So they actually, I did do an extra one here. Um, it's not, unless your doctor tells you not to have it, I feel like a lot of people worry unnecessarily about it. So now I've got the a quarter cup of the amino acids. I've got a quarter cup of broth, maple syrup, actually the soy is um, protective for a lot, like for breast and um, prostate and other types of cancer and heart disease. Now, I, it calls for two cloves, of garlic, uh, two cloves of garlic. I wasn't super happy with my garlic, so you, about an eighth of a teaspoon of garlic powder will suffice per clove, which I think is nice to have, because sometimes you think you've got something, then you check it out, it's not in the best shape. Oh, you know what, I forgot too. But a tablespoon of tomato paste. I love these tubes because you know the tomato paste usually comes in a six ounce can. And if you're not going to use it all, if you just need one little tablespoon. Okay. So this is just really easy. It keeps in the refrigerator. And 
gonna give it a good shake. Or you can whisk it, make sure that lids on nice and tight. So I press the tofu about a half an hour and then I'll marinate, uh, put the marinade on and let it marinate for, it can be a couple of hours. So I'll just put it in the refrigerator. Uh, what it does make a healthy amount of marinade. Like I said, if you didn't want that, you can just use the uh, soy tamari or the aminos. And then I put that in the refrigerator to marinate. And then I made this earlier. I have good baking sheets and sill pads, and then I have the ones that I use for this because it gets a little bit messy. And you can see those nice and golden. Ready? Then, so that's all there is to that. I think it's a very versatile thing. Uh, you can put it in sandwiches, wraps, bowls, eat it plain for dinner. I'm gonna just, Usually I'll let that natural release, but I want you to see what my um, the curry looks like when it's done. Like what Vicki and I want to do is give you templates so that you have ideas. You can use all of these things a lot of different ways and enjoy having healthy food a little easier. Make it advance or have it some of these things will just be easy to put together and wish you could see it smells so good. And myself here. See in there. You can see that one it's really hot. So it's a nice soupy consistency. You can make it, you can use less liquid if you want it to be thicker or more if you want it more of a soup. If you wanted to, you could use that immersion blender and um, make it a little bit just part of, I wouldn't probably blend the whole thing, blend a little, make it a little thicker base. So we are all set. Do you have any questions? All right, thank you both so much. Everything looks so good. Everyone in the comments is, you know, talking about how delicious everything looks. We all, as always, wish that we could actually try the food you guys are eating. Okay, to the questions. Okay, so to start, uh, Vicki, someone asked, where did you find the low sodium Ezekiel wraps? They've never seen them. I had never seen them before either. And I found them at Whole Foods in Ann Arbor this, uh, on Monday and they're Very in the nice. freezer section. Yes. All right. Um, Michelle, for the salad jars, someone asked, how long could you store them in the fridge? Um, how long will they stay fresh? Well, usually about five days, but I, um, I make a lot of things for my mom and I made a jar for her. It was the Southwestern one and it had diced avocado. And she kind of forgot about one of them. It was tucked away in the back of her refrigerator. A week later, it still was great. The avocados hadn't oxidized. So it can get pushed a little bit. I think it depends on how tight a seal, how much you have in there, but usually about four or five days. Okay, perfect. Um, Vicki, what kind of curry did you use for the lentil soup? Um, you know, I actually used a, um, let's see. I have a curry that is from, let's, let me grab it. Madras curry that is from the local spicery. And I actually got this um, online and it's um, in California actually. So this actually, I got shipped to me, but I usually will use whatever I've got on hand. And typically it'll be, Trader Joe's or um, just another jar of curry. I love to get the spicy curry when I can find it. And so when I do find it, I use spicy curry in here, but otherwise I just use your typical kind of regular curry, which is a nice combination of spices as well. Okay, 
Very nice. So people can, you know, really use whatever curry they have. Whatever Absolutely. They have Nothing fancy is required. Yes. Awesome. Great. I okay. just wanted to show a couple others for people that Pensy's has the uh, now curry and they've got a nice hot curry too. So Vicki was saying she likes the spicy one. So I just thought I'd show you that. Option. Here's another one that's also, this is also a hot madras curry from McCormick. It's an organic one. Just got it at Kroger. So I, I'm typically wherever I am when I need it is where I get it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Very nice. Um, okay, let me see. Uh, Maureen asked, just what is liquid smoke from the tofu recipe? You could touch on that. Oh, the liquid you know. smoke. I'm looking all over. I don't know what on earth happened to it. I had, um, it's just, they just put um, like hickory or whatever the wood is and they steam it. it just, it, that's all it is, is the smoke and the water. So it's not bad. I mean, Dr. Greg or some people have gotten a little worried about is it a chemical? I buy them from small companies. Usually I, I get it through Amazon, but I go for the small companies. There's another company, maybe Vicki knows the name of it. It's pretty common in grocery stores, but it's got some other things in it, like caramel color and other things that I don't want to have. I don't, um, I do not know what happened to it, but it's just a, a little bar, a bottle that would look kind of like, we'll just see if we get put in here. Yep. Well, no, um, but it'd be this kind of bottle. And then, uh, Trader Joe's doesn't have their coconut aminos for a long time. It has been months, but they've got this smoky barbecue uh, coconut amino. So that might work too in a pinch. I've tried that. That's really good. <laughs> um, let me see. Uh, also, I think, oh, Michelle's taking a drink of water. Um, <laughs> let me see. Oh, just. just <laughs> A couple more questions for you, Michelle. Um, someone was, oh no, I'm sorry. Okay, no worries. Let me see. Um, I mean, there's lots of really positive comments. People are saying they're finally gonna be able to use their pressure cooker. They're so excited to do that. Absolutely. Um, Michelle, just someone to know you found the tomato paste in the tube. Okay. I got, I, I've seen it at Trader Joe's. This one was from Whole Foods. It comes in a cardboard box often. This one was, or it'll be um, just like this. So it's just uh, very oh. handy. I really like having these. I've wasted very a nice. lot less tomato paste this way. Absolutely. Uh, and also, I think the last question for you, Michelle, is just where did you find your jars for your salad? They're great jars. Um, Target. <laughs> I've had them again at the um, hardware store. I'll buy a case. Um, and then the lids at Target, too. But you can find these, like, I think Walmart, Meyer. they have them all over the place. This Very is the nice. big brown size. Yeah, and I like what, this whatever one. jars you have. Yeah, as long as it's in wide mouth, you want the wide mouth for dumping the salad back into, you know, the bowl you're going to eat it out of. It's just Absolutely. easier and a good seal. That's why I like the mason jar because these are the leak proof seals and then they have the stainless steel lids that are really tight seal also. Absolutely. I find All jars right. at also at Kroger um, and also Ace Hardware. And right. one time when I needed to make 50 of them for a group, I actually got them online and um, through Amazon. So you can find the jars pretty easily these days. And they're really affordable. And they're, since they're reusable, you can find so many uses for them in the kitchen, as Absolutely. Michelle and I both love them. Yeah, I know. Absolutely. This is a new mason jar thing. I actually got it for my mom to get her to drink more. That's been such a challenge. <laughs> this, is, this is easy because it's got the indentation. So just put lemon water in there. I love it. I love it. That's I think great. I think I probably both look like we have a little issue with mason jars. So how, <laughs> I, I love it. I understand, you know, reusable is great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, you know, so many uses and they fit so nicely organized in your fridge. You know, what else could you want? Um, let me see. Oh, someone, Jody is saying, you know, summer garage sales and thrift stores are excellent places to find mason jars as well. Um, all right. It's looking like this is the end of the questions on my side. I am going to turn it over to Gail to see if there are any questions from Facebook. But first, I just want to share the survey I mentioned uh, for Veg from Veg Michigan really quick. Again, it's just maybe five questions. We would just take a moment for you to fill out and we'd really appreciate it. We really want to give you the presentations you're looking for. 
All right, uh, Gail, I'll turn it over to you if you have any questions from Facebook. What a great presentation. I really enjoyed this. The cooking demos were excellent. I'm, I was taking my little notes. Like I think I have most of those things in my pantry right now. So something I'm going to make, at least the wraps, I know I have all of that. So great job, ladies. I appreciate it. And looking on Facebook, I see a lot of compliments here. Um, I had a couple of people ask, how can they get the recipes? So I did provide them the information there as well. But overall, just compliments on Facebook. So great job. Wonderful. And Great. then have well, you have you done the survey for people to take? Yep, yep. yep. So <clears throat> I just filled I uh, the surveys in the chat uh, for anyone, and I think everyone short should have the recipes. Again, you are welcome. Um, you know, to send me an email if you need that in PDF. We also are recording this, so if you want uh, me to send you the link to the recording when it is up. You can also send me an email as a reminder. I'm putting my email in the chat once again. It's just olivia at vegmichigan.org. Um, there is one last question, although I know Jody did put a link to this before. A couple of people did ask where you find the silicone containers uh, you use for freezing, Vicki. Great. Well, I grabbed these because I've become quite a fan and I actually have purchased them in every size that they make. They're called super cubes, and I believe this story is one of those things that Shark Tank funded. I'm not positive yeah. of the whole story, but I think this was one of those like lovely success stories. Um, and so super cubes comes in this two cup size. I have a couple of these, and then I've got these, which are one cup size, and I've also got the half cup size, and then I've even got this little tiny one, which I think these are just a couple of tablespoons. And I have brownies, raw brownies that Michelle and I like to make frozen in these so that I can pop one or two of these out at a time. But I'll show you also what these look like when, I think I've got one out here. Yeah, um, I had made this lentil soup a couple of weeks ago and I froze it in these one cup size containers and then this lovely top goes on and the whole thing freezes. And once it's solid, you take it out so that you can reuse this container. You pop it out. They just pop right out because it's silicone and it's really flexible. And then you can store these one cup or two cup size, whatever you have um, in a bag and just label it that it's, this is red lentil soup from another time. So, you could store several, you know, you, again, you can kind of make whatever size fits your needs. Um, and I've got half cup sizes as well that I use for sometimes leftover brown rice or what I like to do, Michelle knows I like to do this midweek. I like to see what I've got in my refrigerator that maybe I'm not going to finish. Maybe I got a little overzealous on the weekend and I made a couple things that I thought we were going to finish and we didn't. Or I've got, you know, something I, I tended to, you know, we somehow ended up with more than I expected. I like to just take whatever it is and just, it could be pasta, sauce, whatever I've got on hand, freeze it and then pull it out the next week or whenever I'm ready to have something on a day that I don't have time to cook. So it's a real lifesaver. And I think it's supercubes.com. So well, I, I do recommend these. I'm just going to say, I'm late to the super cubes party, but I'll be getting more. I got these at Sur La Table. Okay. So it is a super cube, but it's just like, and I've had, they have other types like this that I have a few of, you know, I put broth if you just need a little bit for deglazing the pan or things like that. But I love the super because the lid and it keeps it, it gives it structure and it's not as wobbly in the freezer and then you're not getting the other flavors. So I do, you can get less expensive ones like this, but I, I'm going to be filling up on these, my uh, increasing. Yeah, these are really nice. I yeah. agree. And you can stack them because they're so stable. And then as soon as they're ready to, you know, pull back out and um, empty out and store in another fashion, you can re just rinse these out in the, or wash them in the dishwasher and they're ready to reuse the next time you've got some leftovers are ready to and I think one of the keys to being able to eat in a way that makes you feel good later is to have food prepped and sometimes it's just the way that Michelle and I are doing it right now but sometimes it's to have something handy to grab and thaw so this literally takes put into a bowl microwave it for three minutes and you've got a bowl of soup so. I also think um I agree with everything you're saying, but it also cuts on waste. If you just buy, you open up a thing of vegetable stock and you don't use that much, 
whichever kind you get, if you're freezing it, then you're not, you don't realize that a week later you left the stock in there and you want to throw it out. Something like this, you just, you know, a little serve it, whatever size you want, but it's just nice. And I think it really cuts back on food waste. 